Uh, good evening. Uh, my name's Andrew Gunn. I'm a uh, freelance children's television script writer, and let's do this thing. Okay, so I have one of those careers in TV where it always pays to have your CV up to date. Um, I'm quite happy to fill up my CV with a long list of all my writing credentials, uh, but I always hesitate when I am supposed to list my hobbies or interests. Um, hobbies or interests, for some people, this is a, a real chance to uh, show off. Uh, uh, for example, they say, I, I go base jumping for, for charity. Every summer I base jump off alpine peaks with a group of disadvantaged children raising money for uh, various neurological diseases. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I, I don't have any interest like that. Um, uh, my, my interest, or, or one of them, is tucked away behind a door at the end of our hall. Um, yes, my name is Andrew and I have a model railway. And tonight I'm going to uh, just, did I say justify? I meant explain it, um, uh, with uh, perhaps a little pop psychology uh, thrown in on, on the way. It's, it's possibly a genetic condition. My, my granddad was a steam engine driver and he drove locos like this. This is the big uh, X class, heavy freight, North Island main trunk. Now in real, in reality I know this would be a, a long, hard job. You'd get hot, you'd get cold, there'd be no health and safety or anything like that, but gosh, look, is it, wouldn't it be magic? Wouldn't you love it? Anyway, it was for my sixth birthday, uh, which was so long ago that birthday cards came in black and white, uh, that my, my dad went down to the model railway shop and he bought me a second-hand uh, model train set. Now, in those days, there was uh, one brand which dominated the market. Uh, the, it was the, the famous uh, British company, there it is, Hornby. And when I say British, I mean very British. This is the Hornby's model of the Princess Elizabeth steam loco, uh, named after our very dear queen-to-be. Uh, Hornby uh, was the dominant brand, very much about the home country. Uh, but the, the model train that my dad bought home for me was not from Hornby, it was from its great rival from West Germany, Marklin Precision German Engineering. I had this little loco when I was six years old. I have the modern version of it now. Um, I don't know if you've seen the, the movie uh, Ratatouille, but there's a scene in that movie where the, the old, the world-weary restaurant critic tastes some of the simple peasant food he had when he was a child, that's the scene, and instantly he is transported back to his childhood. Sense memory. Well, when I see that little loco and I smell the engine oil and the particular smell the engine gets when it was hot, I'm a kid again too. Um, it takes me back. There were competing interests for the nudie no, non-sporting types like me in those days. Model aircraft was the other big one. This is from the Airfix model plane catalogue. I love reading those. Sometimes I tried to put the kits together, got a lot of glue on my hands, but it smelt good. Um, <laughs> Nevertheless, there was something about trains. This is the Marklin catalogue from the 1960s. This is a, a very future-focused West Germany here. That's the red and yellow Trans-European Express train at the bottom, which had just united uh, Europe in a more positive way than previous recent attempts. Um, I didn't get that subtext then. I, thought it, I just thought it looked cool. Uh, but anyway, when you, look at, when you think of model railways, you probably think of something like this, which is great. There's just one little thing that jibes me about this particular one. And the trains are quite obviously all going around in circles. It's about as believable as the Auckland public transport system. <laughs> it's not really my cup of tea. Because the sort of model railway that I really like is one that depicts a world that is fairly realistic and it seems to obey the rules. And I think there's a connection here, here's the big philosophical point, between why I like this and why I like writing. It's about making a believable world. Now, in New Zealand writing, at least uh, in New Zealand screenwriting, the, the worlds we create are mostly pretty grim and pretty bleak. There's nothing wrong with that. This is one of my favourite movies, Sleeping Dogs. But it's got to be said that most of our screenwriting, anyway, tends towards the, the dark side of life, the dystopian man against the elements, the cinema of unease. Meanwhile, the... The sort of stuff that I write is this. This is a little movie we made called Kiwi Flyer. Uh, laughs and hijinks, uh, good guys who win, spoiler alert, and uh, the, the baddest baddie in the movie was Vince Martin, who at the end crashes into a portaloo, uh, thus restoring balance to the cosmos. <laughs> um, 
it's the same kind of imaginary world, that sort of imaginary world, that draws me to the model railway. By the way, these close-ups aren't of mine. Mine's still a work in progress. But look at this. There are, there are icicles and frost, but look at the, the warm, good-natured glow coming from those, those carriage windows. <laughs> these, these imaginary scenes and imaginary worlds, they remind me of my favourite all-time children's book, Richard Skerry's What Do People Do All Day? I don't know if you remember it. It begins with that great line, everyone is a worker, and it talks about a busy little town called Busy Town, where everyone gets along and everyone's work is valued. It says, some workers work indoors, and some works outdoors. Some work up in the sky, and some work underground. Some workers always do their work at the same place, others travel from place to place to do their jobs. I love that book, and I love that town and that world. Just as I have a a soft spot that goes back to my childhood for these worlds. They're a, a nice place to, to lose yourself in for a short time. There's no st strife and suffering. Uh, even the coal smoke from a steam engine somehow doesn't contribute to global warming. <laughs> there's, there's no dirty politics. There's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a world where everyone pays their taxes and, and no one kicks dogs. Now, it would be a little sad if one spent too much time uh, in here. There are some things you just can't do in this world and can't have. The, the laughter of a child, the, the love of a good woman, the, the feel of a cold beer in your hand. Although there is uh, nothing to stop you from taking the cold beer to the train room at the end of the hall, uh, as long as you don't uh, spill it and create a one in a thousand year flood. Um, but anyway, that is my, uh, my secret interest. It's, uh, it's out in the wild now, and uh, there's no going back. So I, I may even put it in my CV. So thanks very much.